Here's how you can earn money and be successful without burning out. The thing with these techniques is that they're not obvious. It's not something that a lot of people would consciously do, but oh, the impact that they make. Balancing an online side hustle with your professional and personal life requires intentional effort and a commitment to maintaining habits. These strategies aim to help create harmony between your work and your personal pursuits and ultimately help you earn more money faster and healthier. So here's the exact tactic if you want to avoid being pulled off track by sneaky distractions. Like Cal Newport teaches, he's the author of Digital Minimalism, Choosing a Focused Life in a Noisy World. You can cultivate deep focus, eliminate distractions and achieve peak productivity in an increasingly noisy world. His research and strategies offer practical solutions for thriving in today's hyper-connected society. So this is about distractions. They're lurking in the shadows, ready to jump at you at first sign of weakness. So here are three things you need to do. Silence notifications, set specific break times, and create a focused working environment. We'll talk more about the working environment in just a little bit. This next one is a tricky one. It has distraction hidden in plain sight. It's about embracing flexibility. So to have a work-life balanced life, you also need to incorporate flexibility in your day. And this could be really dangerous. Flexibility in this case indicates for you to adapt your schedule depending on what's happening during the day. It's a promise of freedom and spontaneity but it could be a temptation to wear off course. So instead of looking at flexibility as the lack of structure, look at it rather as an artful arrangement of priorities in response to shifting tides. When you need flexibility, do it with purpose, intentional, so that an adjustment is a strategic maneuver. But it really is a balancing act. You need to adapt your schedule to personal commitments, but it should always be with your high priorities and goals in mind, so that flexibility becomes a tool rather than an obstacle. This quote is introducing us to the next tactic. Remember to take care of yourself you can't pour from an empty cup. So this is about taking regular breaks to prevent burnout and to keep being productive during your day. Actually, the world today glorifies constant productivity. So taking a break is actually like a radical act. But it's about self-care. It's about taking precious moments to recharge and refuel yourself. You can also use this time to reflect on progress, recalibrate your goals and realign your priorities. Your breaks are not just moments of rest. They're also opportunities for introspection and self-discovery. Think of your breaks as pit stops. Recharge your mental batteries. So also step away from your desk or wherever you're working, stretch your legs, maybe do a little bit of yoga. Like we said before, take a walk in nature or do some meditation. So here are some examples of what you could do during a break. Mindful breathing. Take a few minutes to practice deep breathing or meditation to clear your mind and reduce stress. Stretching exercises. Perform some gentle stretching to relieve tension and improve circulation. Quick walk. Step outside for a brief walk. Get some fresh air and stretch your legs. So enjoy a healthy snack of, for example, fruit, berries, nuts, yogurt, to refuel your mind and body. You could also engage in brain teasers, like a Sudoku or a quick puzzle, stimulating your cognitive functions. You can also spend a couple of minutes visualizing and reaffirming your commitments to success. You could take a music break, listen to your favorite song or play your favorite song on the piano. Make sure to hydrate. Water, tea is the best, coffee comes second. Use a journal to put down your reflections on your day. And last but not least, you could practice gratitude because gratitude cultivates a positive mindset and you really need a positive mindset to stay out of burnout and to keep working on your side hustle. And positive psychology has a deep impact on performance and happiness. Like Sean Anker, author of The Happiness Advantage, he says he's passionate about science of positive psychology and how it impacts happiness and success. And his research reveals how cultivating a positive mindset is fostering strong relationships 
that can lead to greater resilience and achievement. Next tactic is about your workspace. Here it comes. Designate a specific workspace in your house. It creates a physical and psychological boundary between work and leisure. It allows for a mental separation. And your workspace should be your sanctum for productivity, your fortress of focus, where distractions dare not tread. So your work zone should be free from everyday life distractions. It could be a cozy corner of your living room, it could be a nook in your bedroom, or maybe a spot in your backyard. Let it be a symbol for your commitment and productivity. So outfit it with tools and resources for you to stay productive, like chair, desk, lighting, if that's what you need. But also personalize it with items that make you feel good, make you become productive and focused and creative. It could be motivational quotes, artwork or plants. And this is a game changer. Listen, establish a daily routine that starts with you entering your workspace and ends with you exiting your workspace, signaling to your brain that it's time to change focus. Here are some practical steps to create this separate workspace. Choose a dedicated area, quiet corner, free from household distractions. Then define the boundaries. You can use screens, curtains, doors or room dividers to create a sense of separation. Then organize your space. Arrange your space for optimizing productivity. Then set ground rules, maybe with family members and housemates, so that they know when they cannot disturb you, avoiding interruptions during your sessions of productivity. And like I said, also personalize your space, then maintain your space. Make sure that you honor your space. Keep it clean and organized. And then respect the boundaries so that you don't bring personal tasks into your work environment and so that you don't bring work tasks into your personal environment. Last but not least, this tactic is about hobbies. Dedicate time to hobbies or activities you enjoy to rejuvenate, recharge, and promote a healthier work-life balance. Just as you schedule meetings and tasks, also schedule time for your hobbies. Why? Because they enrich your life. Hobbies play a vital role for work-life balance. They bridge professional obligations with personal passions, the refueling energy reserves, the recharging your batteries and your spirits. So whether it's sketching in the morning or going for a round of golf in the afternoon, it doesn't matter as long as it recharges and creates a sense of fulfillment. Your hobbies should bring you joy and nourish your soul. And the research shows that hobbies do have an impact on your mental and physical well-being. This helps you cultivate resilience. It helps you combat stress. And here are some tips how you can incorporate hobbies into your schedule. Put them in your time blocks. Schedule them regularly. Block off dedicated time in your calendar. And don't underestimate shorter bursts of hobbies during your day, maybe just 10 minutes. Also, if possible, try to make some of your hobbies social and also make sure that during your hobbies, you're also allowed to fail and make mistakes. Find a way to look at yourself with humor. So this is about work-life balance. And balancing a side hustle with professional obligations, family, house, etc. is really hard. And these tactics are here to help you create harmony. But wait, there is more. Watch this video to take your next step on your side hustle journey and I'll see you in that one.